Hi guys, Jamie here from JB Motion. In today's video, we're going to be taking a hard surface like my desk, for example, and now we're going to be creating a hole inside of Cinema 4D, making it look like the hole is in the desk, and then the cherry on top is going to be this sphere that you see just falling through the hole. So let's get started on this. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is bring in our material, our image and you'll be able to download this image from the description below. It's an image of our desk, desk basically, so we need to bring this into the luminance channel so we can turn off reflectance and color. Let's turn on luminance and let's load that in. This image again, you can get it from the description below. Okay, so now we can put that onto a background object. And now we have our scene set up. So let's create a camera and make it active. And we can also create a plane, which is going to act as our desk. So let's just call it desk. Now we need to make sure that our desk object actually looks like it is this desk. So we need to line it up. So we're going to be moving our camera around, uh, make sure that it's active. And we're going to move our camera around to make this look good. So I'm going to bring this out to the edge so I can uh, line it up a bit better. So something like that. Oh, not like that. Something like that. And we can move that along the x-axis. And that looks pretty good. Okay. So I'm just going to increase the size of this using these orange circles here. This is fine. Just line this up with the edge of the desk as best you can. And yeah, that's good. Okay, so now we have our desk object in there. We need to create a hole. So we're going to use a cylinder to cut out a hole just wherever it lands. So we're going to go here. And we're going to put this into a bool object. So let's hold down Alt before we do actually select the bool. And that will automatically make the cylinder a child of it. Now we need to bring our desk into the bool as well. And now we have our hole. So we need to create a bit of depth to this hole. So we're currently using a plane for our desk. So to create a bit of depth, what we can do is create another cylinder object. And that'll pop right into the center, world center. So that's perfect for our hole. And we can turn off caps here. So let's do that. And now we have no top and bottom to our cylinder. Let's uh, bring this down. We want to align this perfectly with our desk object so that it's flush. So what we can do is Let's just bring this down to the bottom of our object manager. Not necessary, uh, just for myself. I'm going to make this editable by hitting C on my keyboard. And then I'm going to use the axis center tool here. So if you don't see that up in your toolbar, hit shift C on your keyboard and you'll be able to type it in there and it's here. So double click on that. Now we can set the handles of our axis handles on the Y to 100%. Hit execute. That'll bring those up there to the very top of our object on the Y there. So now we can go into our cylinder coordinates and set them to zero on the Y, and that's going to uh, align with our desk object. So now we have our hole. Uh, we can call this hole, and this is actually this cylinder is actually our hole maker. And um, what we can do with our actual hole object is we can scale this down so that it's not uh, that deep because we want it to kind of you want to imagine how thick your desk would be if there was a hole in it so we're gonna go for something like this you can kind of see it there and we need to apply a material to this that's gonna look like it's wood I suppose or that wood has there's a hole in the wood so go to your content browser and if you search chipboard you, you should find this material 
Um, just make sure that you are at the top level before you do your search. So you can click on this arrow if it's black until it turns gray. And then just search chipboard, hit enter, and that will pop up. So if we double click on that, that'll be brought down to our materials panel. We can go back to our objects here and we can apply that to our whole object. So now we have our hole and we have our desk. So if we render that, you can see what we're getting so far. So we need to create some lights as well for this. So let's do that now. Let's create a light and we can... Let's move this up along the Y. To about here for now, we can move that up further in a minute. And we can create now our sphere that's going to fall into our hole. So let's do that now. And let's bring this up along the Y and just scale it down. Okay. So right now we need to make this desk object look like it's not a Cinema 4D plane. So to do that we need to create a new material and just like we did with this material that we're using for our background object, we need to load in the desk JPEG into our this time our color channel. So let's do that now. Let's create a new material, open it up and turn off reflectance and we can go to our color channel this time because we want this uh, whole object, not whole object, we want the desk object which is here to be able to receive shadows. And we can't use this because this is loaded into the luminance channel so that won't be able to receive any shadows. So let's just load that image in now to our color channel and then we can apply that to our, let's just call this desk also and we can call this one background. So let's apply the desk material to our desk object. We need to set the projection here to frontal and we can add a compositing tag here, Cinema 4D tags and compositing. Make sure you, just to do that you can right click by the way and then we can go in there and set this to compositing background. So that's all set up and ready to go. So now we can look more towards our lighting. So we can turn on our shadows just to see, so that we'll be able to see them in our viewport here. So go to options and try to find shadows. Where is it? There we are. So we need to turn on the shadows in this light also. So click on the light object, go to the shadow tab, let's set this to area and we can turn the density down to 60 percent and we need to move this light to match up with the lighting in our room so you can see actually if I just point you over here you can see that I actually have a light just kind of behind where this sphere is and you can also see me there in the reflection, so that's, uh, I'll have to Photoshop that out <laughs> for the actual final video. But anyway, um, so we need to position our lights to match up with the light in this room. So we have a light here, and then a bit further back along the x-axis, we have another light here as well. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to middle mouse click, go into my top view, and I'm going to grab this light, and I'm just going to move it over here we'll say. We can actually middle mouse click to go into our four-way view actually so we can see our shadows and how they're moving as we move our light around in our top view. So we need to move the shadow up a good bit because this shadow, it, the light's way too close to our sphere and it's not as high as our actual real light. So let's move that up along the Y. That's our sphere. Make sure you're moving your light not your sphere. So we can move that up along the Y to about here, we'll say. And then we can position it wherever we want. Now my light is kind of over here. I know where it is, so I'm just going to bring it just over here slightly, we'll say. So it's about this distance away from our sphere. Okay. 
So now if I move my sphere up along the Y, I'm afraid that my floor, my desk, I should say, desk object isn't actually big enough to catch the shadow as it passes over there. So what I can do is just increase the size of this desk object. Now I'm going to bring up my light a bit higher because I don't want my shadow to go that far over there. So let's select our light object in our four-way view. I'm going to go into my right view actually and bring this up a good bit and back a little bit there along the Z. So if I go back in, yeah, I'm happier with that. We didn't actually need to increase the size of our desk. We um, jumped the gun on that one. Anyway, uh, let's bring our sphere up so it's out of our shot. And then we can add a simulation tag to this. So it's going to be a rigid body tag. And now if we hit play, this will fall through the hole. But we don't want it to fall so perfectly through the hole. Uh, we kind of want it to be, we want to go back to the beginning, frame zero, and jump into our right view. And we want it to be, we'll say, kind of just slightly over to the left so that it will hit the edge of our hole, hole there. So let's hit play on that now. Okay, so that's going to hit the edge, it looks like. Um, so... We need to make it so that it actually does hit the edge. So we need to turn, we need to turn this hole. All right, and we need to add the collider tag to this whole object. So right click on it, go to simulation tags, and add a collider tag on that. And let's hit play there. Okay, so we need to move our sphere over a little bit. Now I could add a collider tag to my desk object as well. But uh, to save me the trouble, because I actually just want the sphere to kind of hit the edge and then bounce in. So I'm just going to go back to my top view, zoom right in there, and just line this up better so that the result I want is actually going to happen. So about here, so it's going to hit the edge and then hopefully hit the other edge and then bounce in. But we'll see how it goes. Um, me. That's a bit odd looking. Okay, so it's not actually falling through the hole. That's why it's odd looking. And the reason for that is we need to go into our rigid body, no, our, our collider body tag on our whole object. We need to go to the collision tab and set the shape here to static mesh. So now that will actually allow the ball to pass through the uh, whole collider. So that's pretty good, I guess. Uh, Happy enough with that, looks natural, and it's interesting enough. So I'm going to leave it as, as is. I just want to create a material for my sphere. So what I'm going to do is, let's just get it into our scene, and let's create a new material. Double click in the materials panel there, and let's open that up. So I'm going to go for white-ish, and go into my reflectance channel, turn off default specular, let's add in a Beckman set this attenuation to additive and we can bring the reflection strength down to about 48 percent roughness we can go up a bit to about 15 specular we'll go down to two and yeah we'll see what that looks like now so i'm going to put this sphere material apply it onto my sphere object there now if we do a render preview on that so we're getting the you can see that the sphere is actually reflecting our desk and the hole, which is pretty cool. So if we go forward a few frames, let's have another look at that. So yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, I also want to kind of reflect the image, this uh, JPEG, the desk JPEG. I want this to be reflected by our sphere also. So to do that, I'm going to create a sky object. And I'm going to apply the background um, material to it. So that has, has our JPEG loaded into the luminance channel. There it is. And let's uh, turn off scene by camera for our sky objects. So to do that, right click, go to Cinema 4D Tags, Compositing, and turn off scene by camera. 
Okay, so now if we do that again, so you can, let's actually just turn on global illumination because this won't work otherwise. Uh, so go into your render settings and then go to effect, turn on global illumination. And now let's render that again. So now you can see that we're getting a more natural kind of reflection uh, on our sphere. It's kind of showing the, well, it's it's blurry. It's a blurry reflection, so we get away with it. We, we need to do something about our reflection here because it's reflecting what lies beneath the hole or beneath the desk, we say. So we just need to create, um, we need to create a floor object. Well, we can create a floor object and we can just bring that right down under our desk. And let's just create a black material for that. And let's put that, that needs to be black. Go into your color channel, turn off reflectance, and then we can set the color to black there. And let's put that onto our floor. So now if we render it again, it's going to look like the hole is pretty dark under the desk, which is fine. That's more natural looking. We just need to make sure that this isn't seen by the camera. So right click on it, go to Cinema 40 Tags and Compositing, turn off Seen by Camera and let's try that again. Okay, so I think this is good for the setup of the the uh, hole for now. So let's create one more light because we do have two lights. We have one here and we have one here and this light is actually closer to the window than this light here. So I'm going to go into my top view, middle mouse click and then again into my top view. I'm going to create, I'm going to select my first light, hold down control and drag using the axis handle to duplicate. Make sure you're holding down control. I'm going to bring this closer to where the window would be. So around here, we'll say. And we can, let's see, set the intensity of this one to be 50%. So if we jump back into our perspective and just do another render preview there on that. Okay, so does it make a difference? I'm not really sure. We can check if it does by going to our interactive render region, opening that up and bringing the quality up to the max there. Now if we can just we can just turn this light off and turn it on again to see if it actually is making any difference. It doesn't seem to be, but anyway, it's more realistic to our scene as we have two lights there in the reflection. So we're going to stick with that. So I think this is good to go for a render. I'm just going to check that when our sphere hits the, the hole here that it actually looks like it is actually touching the hole. So let's just, so that's fine. That That's looking good. And on the next contact, yeah, that's pretty good. It kind of looks like it's intersecting a little bit, but I'm going to leave it as is because that's hardly noticeable. Um, one thing we could do to make our hole a bit more realistic, I'm not going to do it, but it's something you could do if you wanted to make your hole a bit more realistic. Now, I just spotted something. We didn't put a protection tag on our camera object, so I hope you guys haven't moved your camera object around. Um, but yeah, put the protection tag on at the beginning is what Captain Hindsight would say on that one. Um, it prevents you from being able to move your camera around because some of you might have actually done that by accident. Hope you didn't. Um, but yeah, protection tag, sorry not mentioning it earlier. So to make this hole a bit more realistic, not going to actually do it, but what you could do is deactivate your camera there. And if you select your hole, what you could do is... So I might as well just do it because I'm going to talk about doing it, so I'll just do it. So we can go to our polygon mode, hit Control A on your keyboard, and we could use D then, the shortcut D, to use our extrude tool. Now if we click and drag in the correct direction, not this way, but this way, we'll have some polygons along the top that we'll be able to 
we'll actually be able to use the chamfer and make this look a bit more rounded and realistic. So if I now go to my lines mode, edges mode, and hit MS on your keyboard, actually UL to get your loop selection tool first, select this loop, and then MS on your keyboard to get your um, bevel tool, and then just click and drag in the right direction. something like that and now you're actually able to so actually do you know what undo that let's use the chamfer tool so hit shift C in your keyboard and type in chamfer Where is it? it's not letting me use that for some reason okay so let's just stick with the bevel tool MS in your key I hit S there by accident so MS on your keyboard and let's just what we can do actually is just click on the edge and then that'll give us the offset options oh, that didn't work. so let's click and drag again okay and then we can add some subdivisions to smoothen that curve a little bit so if we activate our camera again now if we do a render there on that let's bring the sphere a bit closer to our hole and now if we render that you can see that we're getting a nice specular highlight along the the hole's edge there making basically it looks a bit more realistic okay so I think this is ready to render oh it's after changing it's it's changed its mind about how it's gonna land in the hole now that's because we've put the bevel on the edge Okay, so we need to make our hole a little bit bigger. So let's select our hole and go to our scale tool. Let's just make sure that we go into model mode before we scale it and then scale that up. Now we need to scale our hole maker at the same time. So hold down control and select that also. Now let's try that again. We have our hole object and our hole maker object selected. Scale that up. And let's see if that works out for us. So that's a bit too big. Scale that down. Let's try that now. Okay, better. I might go down a little bit more. And try that. Okay, I have to go up now. I'm being greedy. Trying to get it too perfect. Okay, that's fine. So if we just do one more render preview to see what that's looking like before we render this out. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So what we can do is go into our render settings and we can hit go to output, set this to 1920 by 1080. 1080. And we can set the frame range to all frames. And for the save, we can basically just select a destination for this. So I'm going to go here in a folder called Sequence. And that is good to go. So that's everything set up for the render settings. So now we just can save that. Go to our render queue and let's add that in to our render queue and then we can render that away. So that's the end of the tutorial guys. Hope you learned a lot and I'll see you in the next video.